So they say that those that do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. On today's episode of Saz Talks Money, Quarantine Edition, uh, we're going to be covering whether the 2020s will be the Roaring 20s 2.0. So if you recall, the Roaring 20s, it started with a deadly pandemic reminiscent of today. It then led to massive economic expansion, pretty damn cool. But then it ended the decade with a major market crash that led to the Great Depression. So the question is this, a hundred years later, will history repeat itself again? Let's talk money. All we talk is 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 money. So what prompted this episode that we're filming today at my home, at my apartment, is an article I actually saw in the Daily Mail. We'll put the article up right here. And it basically says economists at UCLA have predicted that we get ready for another roaring 20s. Pretty damn cool. Now, here are a couple of the predictions that these UCLA economists make. Number one, they say that you can expect a surging economic growth after effective COVID vaccines become widely available. Uh, economists also predict a gloomy COVID winter. Don't I know it? I'm sitting here at home with COVID right now, social distancing. I feel fine, uh, but still filming this episode. Why? Because the show must go on, my friends. So they're predicting a, back to that, they're predicting a gloomy COVID winter, then a spring and summer of mass vaccinations followed by strong economic growth. So this economic growth is not only just for 2021, the year that we are in right now, but for the entire upcoming decade. And I have some charts to show you to prove their point. So uh, we'll get into that in a second, what these charts show and what this article shows. But before we talk about the future, before we talk about this upcoming decade, let's revisit the past into the roaring 20s of the 1920s and how it compares to today. The 1920s, the roaring 20s, it was the time of the great Gatsby. Um, it was a period of great social, political, and economic change. Does that ring a bell to anyone? Because it does to me. Great social, political, and economic change definitely rings a bell with where we are today in 2021. So this is a time where after the Great War, which is known as World War I now, and a devastating Spanish flu, which would be akin to today's uh, coronavirus situation that we got going on, pandemic, plandemic, however you want to call it. But the bottom line was that after all that, after the war, after the Spanish flu, life was in full swing. Due to pent up demand, young people partied their asses off. And I'm sure my young friends out there would love to party their asses off just like the good old days. Despite prohibition, prohibition lasted throughout the entire 1920s where basically drinking alcohol was illegal. Can you imagine that? No alcohol whatsoever, yet they were still partying. So entertainment was in high demand due to pent up demand. So music, art, and movies all influenced pop culture. So that was going on then. So let's revisit the past. Now, what was the music of the day? Well, it was jazz, big band, and swing music ruled the day. This would be today's pop, hip-hop, and EDM music um, of today. So movies were huge back in the day. In fact, 75% of Americans would go to the movies once a week. 75% of Americans would go to the movies once a week, who would they go to see? Well, none other than Charlie Chaplin. Now today, in today's world, since we're comparing and contrasting, that's very reminiscent of what we're all doing now, which is Netflix and chilling and using other streaming services. So that's a little of the past compared to today. Now, back then it was all about the rise of radio. Everyone got their information from the radio. Radio was everywhere. This is very much like how social media is today. Back in the day, in the, actually 1920, the 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote. Who were these women? A lot of them were called flappers. These, these women were, were rebellious women in short hair and even shorter skirts who they drank, they smoked, and they were sexually free. This is very reminiscent of today's Me Too movement. What else? There was something called the Harlem Renaissance, which was progressing big time. This is just like, very much like today's Black Lives Matter movement, sort of a comparison there. Penicillin was invented in the 1920s. This is very much like the COVID vaccine of today. There was booming industries. Let's talk money now. Let's talk about the industries that, what were the industries? There was cars, aviation, infrastructure, 
electronics and chemicals. Those are some of the big industries that came about back then, which is very reminiscent of today's big tech, AI, 5G, and of course, big pharma. Productivity, let's talk about productivity. Productivity, drows, uh, productivity rose dramatically. See, here's the COVID brain coming in. Productivity rose dramatically. This was thanks to Henry Ford's assembly line, which he used to mass produce the Ford Model T. Now, if I'm drawing a comparison and contrast to Henry Ford, this would be akin to today's Elon Musk and Tesla and the rise of autonomous vehicles that are that's common. That's common. So what else happened back in the 1920s? Consumer debt appeared. We're all my friends out there with consumer debt. We all got it. This was um, consumer debt appeared. This was um, thanks to widespread bank loans and credit. There were not credit cards, but you got it at the bank. We still have that debt problem, as we all know. But today we also have a student loan crisis. So that's a little bit of a different situation back then versus today. So what else was going on in the 1920s? Well, the government, this was after World War I or the Great War, the government wanted people to buy goods that were made in the USA, resulting in profits remaining in the USA. Ring a bell, this is very reminiscent of Donald Trump's American First plan. Uh, it has that written all over that. Not to mention that uh, President-elect Joe Biden has his own American Build Back Better plan as well. You can expect that throughout the early part of the night of the 2020s. So the economy boomed and this was fueled by the growth of the stock market. The stock market, basically people, millions of people drew in for the first time being a part of the American stock market. They're like, what's the stock market all about? Oh my God, I gotta get a part of that. This is very reminiscent of today's Gen Z and millennials starting to use uh, robo advisors like Acorns or Robinhood or Betterment and Wealthfront, stuff like that, sort of reminiscent um, 1920s to 2020s of today with the stock market. Let's talk about the quote of the time. The quote of the time was by President Calvin Coolidge. He said this, the business of America is business. So that was what was going on in the 1920s. Fast forward to today, the closest quote that I can get to that was by none other than the rapper Jay-Z. He says, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. So that's a little bit compare and contrast 20s to the 2020s. So this was a time in our nation, understand this, here's my point. This was a time in our nation where our nation's wealth more than doubled. So the question is this, now we're doing the, the, the 2020s and what to prepare for. Are you ready for that to happen this decade? Don't forget, there was a crash at the end of 1920s, 1929 to be exact, October of 1929 where basically the stock market crash came crumbling down and that was at the very end of the decade, which led to, of course, the Great Depression. So that was at the end of the 1920s. Now let's talk about what to expect this upcoming decade, according to these UCLA economists. So they say that there's two major factors that will lead to economic growth this upcoming decade. Number one is the vaccine, right? I kind of wish I had that at this point in my life right now. The vaccine and number two, Pent up demand, there's that pent up demand again. They're basically saying due to vaccine and pent up demand, the next few years, the economy will accelerate and return to its previous growth trends. Speaking of growth trends, let's actually take a deep dive into these charts in this article from the Daily Mail. So here's chart one. Chart one is called annualized GDP growth by quarter. And basically I'll sum it up for you and we won't get too technical, but here we go. In 2019, GDP ranged from 1.5% to 2.9%. Then in 2020, we reached a low of minus 31.4% in Q2. That was obviously at the height of COVID. We bounced back strong in Q3 to 33% and then flatlined at 1.2% in Q4. Now we're in 2021. Economists predict um, a very low 1.8% GDP, potentially lower according to JP Morgan in Q1 but then it's expected to surge to 6% in Q2. So that's where the surge will happen is in Q2. And then they also predict these UCLA economists that in 2021, Q3 and Q4, all throughout 2022 and 2023, the GDP will grow at a consistent 3% mark each quarter. So essentially what I'm saying is this, 2021 will be a bounce back year, but 2022 is when the real growth will occur.
Let's move on to the next chart. Next chart, chart number two, is consumer spending. And these economists have broken it down into five major categories. Category number one is accommodations, which is basically hotels, lodgings, places to stay. Number two is travel. Number three is recreation or leisure and entertainment. Number four is restaurants, which we know have been decimated uh, due to COVID. And number five is healthcare services. This is elective services and non-elective services. So basically what they're saying in these charts, you can see that driven by pent up demand, there's that pent up demand again, there will be a surge in spending. And 2021 spending will increase and reach pre-pandemic levels by 2022. So chart number three, let's move on to chart number three right now. Chart number three is all about unemployment and the unemployment rate. So in 2019, unemployment ranged from three and a half percent to 3.9%. This was some of the lowest unemployment in the last 50 years. Then obviously 2020, COVID happened. Um, unemployment surged in Q2. It fell to, uh, well, it rose to 13% and then fell from uh, into Q3 to 8.8% and ended the year of 2020 at 6.8%. Now let's fast forward to what you can expect in 2021 and beyond. Basically, the uh, economists are predicting unemployment to slowly dip from six to five to 4% over the next three years. But they're basically saying that you can expect unemployment not to reach pre-pandemic levels until 2024 at the earliest, 2024 at the earliest. So what's the bottom line? Let me sum up these charts um, real quickly in a sentence or less. They're basically saying all in all, GDP is expected to rise and stay stable after 2021 and beyond. Um, Spending is expected to go up. I broke down those five categories and you can see where the spending will increase, but unemployment will slowly, slowly, slowly make its way back. But do not expect unemployment to get back to pre-pandemic levels until 2024 at the earliest. So here's what you can expect this decade. Here's what you can expect this decade, a couple of predictions, a couple of assumptions that we can make. Number one, to all my millennials out there and Gen Z out there, that's people basically between 18 and 40 at this point, millennials will replace the baby boomers as the largest generation in US history. Uh, that's number one. Number two, we talked about student loan debt at the beginning of this a little bit. Vocational schools will replace college for many young people. Many, many people are basically saying, why the hell do I need to go to college at this point? So vocational schools look out for that. And number three, this isn't so much a prediction because it's actually happening. What you can expect, you can expect a V-shaped recovery where we hit rock bottom and we just keep climbing and climbing and climbing the rest of the decade. So those are my three predictions of what you can expect this upcoming decade. But remember, it's not all roses because what happened at the end of the 1920s, 1929 to be exact, there was a market crash. So you can expect a market crash certainly by 2030, I would assume that's my prediction. What do you think? When do you think the next crash is coming? My assumption it will be very much like history repeating itself at the end of the 2020s into 2030, there should be another market crash. So what can we learn from this? What can we learn from this? What can we learn from this episode? What can we learn about history repeating itself? So it's number one, learn from history and you should appreciate your health if you've still got it. I got COVID right now. I'm still doing this episode. Why? Because the show must go on. I feel okay. I'm social distancing, but appreciate your health and build your wealth. So what can you do? You should save that money and you should save up to invest. Where should you invest? Whether it's the stock market, whether it's real estate, whether it's crypto, whether it's commodities, save that money to invest. But always, always, always keep a cushion. We all know that you can expect, just like in 2008, just like in 2020, when the, everything's going well, just like you're gonna expect in the Roaring 20s 2.0, there's going to be another market crash. So the question is, will you be prepared when that crash happens again in 2020? I'm sorry, in 2030, we'll see if that happens. So be prepared for that. So let me leave you with this last quote before we wrap this episode up. Here's a quote that is very apropos today, just like it was in the 1920s. This quote comes from none other than the man of the 1920s, Henry Ford. He says this, coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. 
I hate today in America, we can use a lot of coming together and hopefully a lot of success. So that's the end of this episode. I hope you appreciated this episode coming to you from my COVID quarantine apartment. Don't judge me. I know the walls are barren. I'm currently moving out of my apartment and going to Florida, baby. So if you enjoyed this, please uh, like this episode, subscribe to Valuetainment Economics if you have not, and check out this episode right here that I filmed called Biden's Economic Plan. This is what you can expect from the, un from the incoming Biden presidency in 2021 and beyond. So with that being said, I appreciate you. And as always, save that money. All we talk is 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 money.